Germany won the First World War by 1916 without a single shot being fired on German soil. British convoys were blown out of the Atlantic by German subs, the French army mutinied, and the Russian army was defecting. With British Prime Minister Lloyd George up against a wall, Lionel Rothschild and the Jewish Zionists offered the British a deal they couldn't refuse. We'll bring the United States into the war as your ally and win the war for you, they said, if you'll promise us Palestine. In April of 1917, President Wilson got the green light and declared war on Germany. Because of overwhelming opposition to the war, Wilson invoked the draft and passed the Espionage Act, forcing Americans to fight or be thrown in jail. Billions of U.S. taxpayers' money was delivered to the British war machine, money that was never repaid. In return, the British government wrote the famous Balfour Declaration and addressed it to none other than Lord Lionel Rothschild. The Declaration promised Palestine and Israel to the Rothschild Zionists. In 1917, Lord Allenby conquered the Holy Land, and the Jews were promised a national home in Palestine by the Earl of Balfour a policy endorsed by Woodrow Wilson and by the League of Nations, which made Palestine a British mandate. With the fall of Nazi Germany, the Rothschilds wasted no time waving their Balfour Declaration at the British government and reminding them of their written promise to give them Palestine. But how could the British promise the Arab land of Palestine to the Jews? In 1917, the British parachuted free opium and hashish to the Turkish troops and stole Palestine from them. One ingenious strategy was to parachute hashish and opium to the Turkish troops to try to keep their minds off the fighting. Allenby's strategy worked brilliantly. During World War II, the British needed Arab oil and signed an agreement with the Arabs which forbid Jewish immigration into Palestine. Then at the end of the war, the British broke their agreement with the Arabs and allowed the Rothschild Jewish Zionists to smuggle hundreds of thousands of Jews from around the world into Palestine. To win public support, the Rothschilds, who own Reuters and the Associated Press, bombarded their media empire with images of homeless Jewish Holocaust refugees crowded together in ships off the coast of Palestine. On October 24, 1945, the Bankster Pirates gave birth to their most powerful weapon of global control, the United Nations. According to plan, the British pulled out of Palestine and gave the land to the Jewish Zionists. These Zionist extremists call themselves God's chosen race of people and believe they have a God-given right to the land of the Palestinians. It is important to know that the land now called Israel was originally called Canaan in ancient times. Canaan was populated by the Canaanite people who were the ancestors of today's Palestinians imprisoned in refugee camps in Israel. About 3,500 years ago, the Semitic Hyksos kings ruled Egypt for 100 years, but were expelled from Egypt into Canaan. The Egyptians called these Hyksos people the Habarus, which means Hebrews. These expelled Hebrews invaded and conquered the land of Canaan and changed the name of the land from Canaan to Israel. In 135 AD, the name was once again changed to Palestine after the Romans conquered the land. In 1948, the Bankster-controlled United Nations officially turned Palestine into the Zionist state of Israel. To deal with the millions of Palestinian residents, the Israeli Jews massacred and drove them from their villages and homeland. The Jews herded the Palestinians into two separated regions called the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. The Rothschilds soon began financing Jewish Holocaust refugees to build illegal Jewish settlements on Palestinian land. These illegal Jewish settlements set the stage for Israel's Prime Minister Ariel Sharon's reign of terror against Palestinians who dared to defend what was left of their stolen homeland. 
Like Saddam Hussein, Sharon violated dozens of UN resolutions by using hundreds of tanks and American-supplied gunships and planes in an unrelenting campaign of bombing, murdering, bulldozing, starving, and terrorizing the Palestinians off of what remained of their land. In violation of international law, Israel also secretly developed over 100 nuclear weapons of mass destruction capable of vaporizing the entire Middle East. Defenseless against Israel's U.S.-backed military and media campaign, the Palestinian Muslims fought back with sticks and stones and suicide as their only means of defense against the wholesale theft of their ancient homeland. The story of the Bible was written by Hebrew Jews who tell us that the Hebrew Jews are God's chosen race of people. Bible prophecy predicts that they will one day rule the world from their temple throne in Jerusalem and that the world's King of Kings will be a descendant of King David and King Solomon of Israel. That is what Bible believers all over the world believe will come to pass. To turn this Bible prophecy into a reality would demand the cooperation of world leaders. It would also mean building a third temple in Jerusalem over the ancient ruins of King Solomon's temple. But there is one giant-sized problem. A sacred Muslim shrine called Dome of the Rock was already built on top of the ruins of Solomon's temple in the 7th century. It still stands majestically today in the heart of Jerusalem and it would have to be destroyed. Since Israel is surrounded by not so friendly Muslim nations and with millions of Muslim Palestinians living in Israel's West Bank and Gaza Strip, this Bible prophecy is impossible to fulfill, or is it? Like a screenplay for a movie, the Bible story was written by Hebrew Jews. But who is the director and the producer? Is it God, or is it a special interest group of the world's wealthiest men? The Rothschilds, whose front companies had helped finance Hitler and the Jewish slave labor camps, had turned Jewish Holocaust victims into victimizers. Imprisoned inside barbed wire refugee camps, the Palestinians began to resemble the victims of Nazi concentration camps. According to author Simon Shama, the Rothschilds own 80% of the land of Israel. Even the flag of Israel flies the hexagram symbol from the Rothschild family's red shield. The hexagram has six points, six triangles, and six sides on the central hexagram. The numbers 666 are associated with the biblical prophecies that predict an apocalyptic third world war. The Rothschilds bought Reuters in the 1800s. Reuters then bought the Associated Press, which selects and delivers the same news stories to the entire world, day after day. They have controlling interest in three major television networks and easily avoid media attention since they own it. Until recently, they owned and operated England's Royal Mint and continue to be the gold agent for the Bank of England, which they also direct. They control the LBMA, London Bullion Market Association, where 30 to 42 million ounces of gold worth over 11 billion dollars are traded daily. The Rothschilds earn millions weekly just on transaction fees alone. They also fix the world price of gold on a daily basis and profit from its ups and downs. Over the centuries, the Rothschilds have amassed trillions of dollars worth of gold bullion in their subterranean vaults and have cornered the world's gold supply. They own controlling interest in the world's largest oil company, Royal Dutch Shell. 
They operate phony charities and offshore banking services where the wealth of the black nobility in the Vatican is hidden in secret accounts at Rothschild Swiss banks, trusts, and holding companies. Although Evelyn Rothschild looks like a harmless gray-haired old man, make no mistake about it, Rothschild and his ancestors have hand-picked presidents, crashed stock markets, bankrupted nations, orchestrated wars, and sponsored the mass murder and impoverishment of millions. The wealth hoarded by this one family alone could feed, clothe, and shelter every human being on earth.